In this video, we're gonna talk about 10 things that you need to know about a Tascadero. And unless you can handle these 10 things, you might not wanna move here. So we really wanna give you the facts to help you figure out uh, where you wanna land here on the Central Coast, California. So today I have a special guest, Valerie here, and we're gonna to get to it right now. Well, welcome back to the channel. And if this is your first time here, welcome. And if you're coming back, we're glad to see you here. So in this channel, we talk about real estate, lifestyle, and everything in between. And I'm working really hard. We're working really hard to give you the information to help you figure out where you want to land on the Central Coast. Uh, we're getting calls from people just like you trying to figure it out. Uh, so feel free to reach out, call, text, email, whatever you need to do, day, evening, weekends, it doesn't matter. We'll pick up the phone, help you out. Uh, so feel free to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. Hit that like button that helps other people just like you find the information. And be sure to leave us a comment that really helps us out and let lets us know what we need to go out and dig up you know, more information for you. All right, so we're gonna get right into it. Uh, this is Valerie and she's gonna introduce herself. We're longtime friends um, in the industry and just uh, gonna let you know a little bit about herself. Hi everyone, Valerie Gonzalez. I am a mortgage lender. And yes, Bernice and I have been friends for a long time. So this is really fun to do this together. I grew up on the Central Coast. So I've lived over in many of the towns locally. And so today we're talking about Tascadero. I'm excited to share. Right. So you know, for if you this is your first time here, I grew up here, both my business partner and I, John, uh, we grew up here, raised our kids here, and we're still here. And we're both licensed real estate brokers. He's been living in the area for over 70 years, and I've been here for over 40 years. This is a huge collaboration because the goal is to bring you, you know, the information. And so Valerie is going to bring you a perspective of a Tascadero and things that you need to be aware of. All right. So one of the things you need to know that you don't, you want to avoid a Tascadero unless you want the four seasons. And so Valerie, talk about that. Well, when we say four seasons, we're talking about California still. <laughs> so living all over the central coast and the coastal areas, we consider a Tascadero North County. Mm -hmm. And that is, the weather is a little different there. And I, when I first moved there, I realized it's more like four seasons because coastal area, you pretty much have the same wardrobe all year round. Mm -hmm. There, winter, it's cold, right? Mm -hmm. So I learned how to wear a jacket there and layer. Um, but when I say cold, it's not like the, you know, it's not snowing, it's not Montana, mm -hmm. but it gets, it gets cold. We get, you know, 60 degrees for me. Is cold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Yes. So it gets chilly. You need to probably wear a beanie sometimes that air can get cold. There's probably a little bit of frost in the morning on your cars, things of that nature. So, you know, Tascadero is about 25 minutes from San Luis Obispo and you're going over the grade, the quest of grade. So that's what, you know, um, is causing this change in climate because most of the San Luis Obispo County, San Luis Obispo proper has that mild 70 degree weather most of the year. At Tascadero, North County, that's where we see those, that difference, yes, right? Yeah, okay. definitely. So, right. so in your winter, you're going to definitely dress like it's winter. You'll have some nice days. It could get as low as, you know, 30s, maybe 20 in the morning, but it does warm up. Mm -hmm. And so I would say 60s, you might get some 70s in our winter. Um, for summer, it definitely gets warm. We will definitely have some, you know, 100 degree weather, but it cools off at night. We do see, you know, it cools off um, and it doesn't go every day so we get a break so that's when we talk about okay we get winter we get summer mm -hmm. um, and fall and spring when I moved up to North County fall was uh, like way different to me because guess what I'm like oh the leaves change colors and <laughs> oh I get to wear my scarf so yeah. yeah you definitely notice the season changes where you don't on the coastal areas as much mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and even today you know uh, Valerie came down from a Tascadero and the difference in weather she's it's it's, it's like gloomy gray right now. We're yeah. by the beach. My office is about a block from the beach. So, you know, there's those differences. Like we've talked about microclimates throughout the whole county. So at Tascadero, you definitely have the four seasons. So you're not going to want to move here unless you can handle that. And we talk about four seasons relative to a California <laughs> four seasons. Exactly. We so, don't usually see snow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, so one side note we do want to make you aware of is, you know, there is a difference in the climate like we're talking about and the summers in particular, you guys have something that we don't down in South County. So that would be air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. definitely have air conditioning. The rest of the county, it's 
not that common, but North County, definitely. Mm -hmm. It's not that prevalent. Um, fans and, you know, standing fans and ceiling fans are really what we are used to here. Now, a new construction in San Luis Obispo and in North County as well, you know, air conditioning is just kind of put in now as a perk um, and things like that. But to say that you're going to see that across the board and it is standard in most areas, it's not. But Atascadero, Paso, um, North County, it is a must that is going to be needed. So air conditioning in North County, Atascadero. All right. So we're going on to our next item here. So you want to avoid a Tascadero unless you can handle it. There's really no box shopping around here or around in a Tascadero. So where do you shop? Good question. <laughs> I love shopping. Um, that was really difficult for me, but you know, the good news is there's become more and more little boutique. Mm -hmm. um, so there's cute little shopping for clothing and different, you know, our little town, there's mm -hmm. a few of them. Mm -hmm. But I must say, if you get desperate and you want those stores, you can drive, right? Mm -hmm. So we do have Target about 10 miles away, you know, the big ones like Walmart, Marshall, TJ Maxx, those are about 12 miles away. If you want the bigger stuff, you got to go to the bigger city. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Santa Barbara is only a, uh, an hour and 20 minutes. Well, probably an hour and 40 minutes from, from uh, Tascadero. So, you know, like we are on the central coast, we're right in the middle. So if you want to go to San Francisco, you know, hit the really, really big, you know, high chain stores, the Nordies, mm -hmm. the Nordstrom's, the Macy's, those type of things. They're not too far off and you can just make a shopping spree out of it, you know, but we do have some, you do have an outlet up there, right? You mm -hmm. have it up there. Uh, so you have a little um, outlet store and then we have uh, in Pismo Beach, we have a prime outlet that really does bring in uh, during school starting or the holidays I mean those places are, are packed we have we do see people coming into town to shop at those areas so you know for us sometimes it seems like it's not enough but then for others it seems like it's plenty you know to yeah. come in and shop so it's all perspective uh, depending on your caliber mm -hmm. of needs and shopping desires so but we just want to make you aware that you know we just don't facilitate those big names in our area you know you're still going to do the uh be able to access the home depots the lows for all your home things that you need but at the end of the day you know that that uh exclusive shopping that you might be looking for just is not uh in this area or in a tascadero in particular all right so that leads us to our next um, item that we want to let you know about is you need to avoid a Tascadero unless you can handle eating at restaurants that are of the mom and pop restaurant caliber. <laughs> yes, there is limited restaurants for sure. All of the restaurants you're going to find are usually mom and pop, you know, they're family owned. Um, you don't have a ton of variety, but the ones that are there are pretty good. Also, again, you drive 12 miles north to Paso and that little area is growing with a ton of restaurants. Downtown and downtown. all that downtown mm -hmm. yeah so that's just a skip and a hop over but let, let's just also um let you know that these mom and pops are very unique each of them will have their own specialty and because of our area and our ag and our fresh produce you know a lot of these are um farm to table um you know restaurants too so you know that's a different caliber quality of life that you would be enjoying um in atascadero um and most of the county actually uh so again you know we just don't have those big uh franchise chain uh restaurants in a tascadero itself um, so again just you're gonna need to be aware of that as you're researching the area in particular at Tascadero. I do want to say we just got one higher end restaurant this summer. So mm -hmm. the name is the yellow. It, we do have a rooftop, so it, it's coming. You know, mm -hmm. the restaurant, uh, the game is it's there, but it's taken a little bit longer because of course we're a small town, but there is some choices. Mm -hmm. As I've said before, we are the slow life. So <laughs> everything slowly makes its way here, but that's what's so quaint and beautiful about our area that we love. Uh, but again, just letting you know the facts that that's just, you know, those big chain restaurants are just not around here and in particular in Atascadero. Okay, so here's our next point here is you want to avoid a Tascadero if you can't handle having limited school options. Okay, so, um, you know, we're a small area, small town, so there's only so much available there. 
Um, my kids are grown and all that good stuff, but uh, Val, you have a daughter. And so, yeah, tell us about uh, the schools over there and what's going on. Yes, yeah, so we there is limited. There's one high school, a middle school. There's quite a bit of elementary schools. And I know when I um, my daughter started school, we would drive to San Luis Obispo down the hill um, for the first few years. And more recently, we hired a private, basically tutor. She does homeschool. So she does private homeschool in a little pod. So. So there is options that's for, available that so is that's available. nice yeah yep. so there's a lot of moms who want to do homeschool part part time and there's lots of pods that have been formed that have been an option as well as the public schools there is a private school a christian private school there that goes into middle school middle school in our area is up to eighth grade mm -hmm. so there is that option but again, there isn't a ton. There's only about 30,000 people in Atascadero. So the need just hasn't been there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about like, so you moved away and came back, right? And yeah. so um, the difference in school systems there, did you notice anything or? Um, yeah, know? so I moved to the city, you know, to Los Angeles and, um, and also San Diego. At the time, my daughter wasn't old enough to go to school, but mm -hmm. I did do a lot of research and of course, there's just more options, but we felt best to move back to Tascara with the options. I, we felt it was enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So just to let you all know that, you know, clients that have moved from the bigger city areas and bringing their families here, you know, it's a little bit, they're re it's refreshing to know that there's, you know, there are private schools, um, very community and parent, uh, act, you know, involvement in most areas, no matter where you land in the county, that's going to be across the board. There's a lot of parent involvement involvement and our public school systems rate really nicely they rate they rate high and I have another video about that so um, you know even though there might not seem to be options as we're telling you you know with the Tascadero itself if you're willing to commute your child somewhere or the homeschool option that's available now since we've all experienced a big change in the world the last couple of years and that's where people are venturing that's available mm -hmm. so that's that's fantastic um, so you know we just want to let you know that there's just limited options, but still an opportunity to maybe entertain something else that could fit your family's needs as you're moving into the area. So we just wanna let you know that. So wait, before we uh, leave this subject, we wanna go ahead and tell you something that's pretty amazing in this area. So Val, what do we got? So there is um, also an immersion school. That means it's bilingual. So if you have any desire for your child to learn um, Spanish, they start from kindergarten up. There's one in Paso Robles and there's also one in San Luis Obispo. It is open. You do have to get on a wait list and it's very you know desirable, well, but it out. is a really great program that we do offer in this county. That's awesome. Yeah. So just take note of that. Okay, so this leads us to our next item we want to let you know about is you want to avoid a Tascadero if you don't want to have a small community uh, feel or lifestyle because that's what it offers. Because again, getting back to some of the things that we have touched on is the the small community. Yeah. Um, you said how many? You uh, there's about 30,000. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's pretty small. Um, so, you know, if you're trying to avoid someone that you don't want to <laughs> see from whatever, uh, you know, your neighbor or someone in the community, you're probably going to run into them in the store. You know, there's only so, so far you can get in the community. But, you know, if you're moving in from somewhere else yourself or looking for that slower pace uh, and a welcoming, you know, a community or people, then this could be a good fit for you. But you're, if you're looking for a big area, big population, you know, a lot of things like that, then it's probably not for you. So it's just a small community. Uh, in a Tascadero and that's just what it is. So you just need to be aware of that. And you know, honestly, I, when I first moved there, I didn't like that about it. I would go to the store and of course I'd run into somebody. So you gotta be halfway dressed. And then I moved to LA and I realized, oh my gosh, nobody even knows me here. <laughs> <laughs> so when I moved back, I actually uh, liked it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I appreciated it. Yeah. All right, so we do wanna let you know a couple of things, a couple of local things that you should know as you're researching the area in Tascadero in particular. The grocery stores. So what do we have to say about that? Oh yeah. Well, we only have a few choices. Okay. So while you're bumping into all those people at the grocery stores, you're going to probably see them at Vons, maybe <laughs> Smart and Final. Um, and I, I myself go to Trader Joe's. It's not in Atascadero, but it's about seven miles north in a city called Templeton. That's where I shop. There is several co-op type stores. So if you like more organic, um, smaller farmer market type stores, you're going to find those there. 
And then of course we do have the farmer's market you could shop at. Always our farmer's market. So that's something, again, if you're researching the area, whether it's a Tascadero or surrounding areas, you're gonna find a farmer's market no matter where you're at. So don't fret, but a Tascadero has that. And a smart and final is kind of like a little Costco. So if you don't wanna make the run to San Luis Obispo slow, then you will have that option in a Tascadero, right? So, um, so yeah, so just know that you might run into somebody that um, you do want to see or don't wanna see <laughs> at the grocery store because <laughs> it's a small community. <laughs> Okay, so one other point we want to let you know about is that we do have eclectic infrastructure. So if you're looking for like a uh, area that has infrastructure that's like newer or, you know, uh, roundabouts, you know, sidewalks, continuity in the infrastructure, it, it just doesn't exist here. So you're going to want to avoid a Tascadero if that's a must on your list. And uh, a Tascadero has different roads that are you know finger roads that you can take you're going to utilize highway 101 which we talk about a lot on this channel because that is our main highway tascadero utilizes that a lot you have to get to you know you have to utilize highway 101 to get up and down north or south or wherever you're going to be commuting to uh so that is something that uh, you're going to just come across here uh in san luis Obispo county in california in general really 101 takes you all the way so what else do we want to talk about uh infrastructure as far as the neighborhoods you're gonna like you're saying you're gonna find some that don't have sidewalks maybe you'll be by a house you know maybe the value is a million dollars and across the treat you that house needs to be tore down it's very it varies in each neighborhood mm -hmm. so it's not um and i think that's why people go there because they don't want to see the cookie cutter mm -hmm. type home. it's a very country feel road um you know it's there a lot of one way one way this way one way that way you know we don't have like big four lane uh big roads in a tascadero if you will and again you'll just hop off the 101 to whatever exit you need to go to a lot of stops you know a lot of stops signs throughout not a lot of like big uh you know four-way light stops that are going to take you places so it, it's just very old school rural feel of mm -hmm. roadways that you're going to be taking um in as you venture through a tascadero so again it's just one of those things you're going to have to know the back roads that's why you need to reach out to local realtors or brokers local people that know the roads know the ways around to help you navigate and figure out you know what's best for you and your family and your needs but just know the infrastructure is just you know kind of dated <laughs> you know we don't have the revenue to update that right now um it's still growing and all that good stuff but it's it's pretty old school you know um not a lot of sidewalks everywhere so it's gonna be hit and miss on that avenue there so just wanted to let you know that you know the infrastructure is just a little dated okay so another factor here that you might want to avoid a tascadero is if you're looking for uh, subdivisions and track homes and that sort of continuity of a area a Tascadero just doesn't have too much of that. The housing is very eclectic, very different, just like the infrastructure. Uh, so it kind of goes hand in hand, uh, but that's the beauty of it too. You know, there's no two that look alike per se. Things are popping up, but for the most part, you're just gonna have a very unique individual home that you're gonna be able to choose from as you're venturing into the area. Uh, so just, you know, be aware of that, that, you know, you're just not gonna have a home that like, uh, you know, new subdivisions with four 400 homes that are going to be the same. So uh, that just doesn't happen in a Tascadero. So we just want to let you know that. But, and what's the feel, do you, um, Val, in, Valerie, in the area, do you feel? Um, I'm seeing it a little bit more, but just not often. You know, it's still very country fill, lots of trees. You, you know, it feels, it, it's, it's unique, you know, mm -hmm. and it makes it unique because there's not all the subdivisions, although there is some townhomes, um, some different developments coming up, but it's, again, it's limited. Mm -hmm. And then you, you in particular said it feels like a, like you're camping. You know, it does. I go on walks. When I take walks, I'm just, it, you're just like nestled in nature. It's so beautiful. And mm -hmm. so I have it felt like, I feel like I'm camping. <laughs> <laughs> so just uh, oak trees are very prevalent in our area. You're going to see those throughout and there are rules on that, on what you can do with them. But um, yeah, we're kind of woodsy, you know, again, it's just 
that kind of feel. Um, so it's not like a big city feel or downtown feel, very sporadic, um, you know, no two are alike again. So there's uh, something really neat about that, but it might not fit your needs. You might not like it. So we just want to let you know that so you don't waste your time. <laughs> if you know you're looking for something in particular or, you know, a suburbia, you know, style or feel, um, it just does not um, exist here in Atascadero. So we'll see what the next decade brings. But for now, that's we want to let you know that. Okay, so we're getting close to the end. So don't leave us because there's some good stuff coming up. But here is something we're not going to dive too much into it because we don't want to get into this. You see this in the media and everywhere. But we do want to let you just we do want to let you know that it is a very conservative, more of a conservative feel here than most of our county, a little bit more Republican in this area. So that might suit you. But if you're not into it, you're going to want to avoid a Tascadero. You don't we don't want you to um, you know, land there and then just say what the heck happened, you know, <laughs> tell us a little bit more about that, Valerie. What do you, what do you feel when you're, when you're testing? Well, you definitely see flags on many homes. Okay. They take a lot of pride in the American flag. So they will, you know, put it up at their home. There is a Republican headquarters there. You will find mm -hmm. that you could, you know, that's right downtown. And there's a shooting range, a gun range. People like their guns there in a Tuscadero. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that, I, that pop out to me right now. All right. So, you know, again, just letting you know, um, we don't need to deep dive too much. You can do your own research and, and that's all, you know, perspective, but you, you just feel it more than you do down South and especially uh, South County or in San Luis Obispo proper itself. Um, so, you know, just be aware of that. We're just trying to give you as much information to help you out as you're researching the area, but in the Tascadero, that's the feel, that's what we're seeing. So we're just giving you the info. Okay, so here's the main point. If you're young or in a certain age that you want to have that nightclub lifestyle, you're going to absolutely need to avoid a Tascadero because everything shuts down at 10 o'clock, <laughs> if not earlier. And that's just across the board too in the county, but a Tascadero in particular, small community, small population, it just no nightclub. So if you're looking for that, you avoid a Tascadero at all costs. But on the flip side, let's hear what you guys do have. <laughs> Well, we, yes, definitely no nightclubs. If you want to go dancing, you best go to a wedding. <laughs> but um, there is, you know, different, um, everyone loves breweries there. And so we have a few of them there. There is, you can maybe find karaoke. There is, again, like the rooftop I mentioned earlier, where you can get craft cocktails. Um, there is some wineries, but those do shut down pretty early. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there is just a small little area. There's a couple bars that you can go to, but it's after 10 o'clock. It's going to get pretty quiet there. Mm -hmm. So those bars, are those like bars that stay up till two or? You know, that's a good question. Okay, because you don't know. Yeah, because you know, go, she doesn't I go to bed it. at nine. <laughs> So anyway, again, our lifestyle is different, but you know, we know that is something that, you know, maybe young kids are looking for or uh, people moving into the area, you know, just what, what is there? Well, if that's, you know, something that uh, is a requirement for you, uh, this is not the place for you. All right, so we're hoping that you find this information of value. And if you do, feel free to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you don't miss any of our future content and leave us a comment. Let us know, is there anything else in Atascadero or its surrounding areas that you wanna know about? Please let us know, cause that helps us out. Okay, so here is our last point. One of the biggest things that you need to know about Atascadero, we feel uh, we left the best for last. <laughs> um, and if you absolutely do not want to be near a hospital, a Tascadero State Hospital is in Atascadero. So um, let's talk about a little bit about more about that. Uh, it's not necessarily the hospital you're probably thinking of. It is actually a prison for individuals that are considered crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty intense. So, um, you know, I think in the all of the years that I've lived in the area, um, I've maybe heard two or three, you know, big things that have happened from that. But it is a huge employer in our mm -hmm. area. Uh, so people can commute from down south, South County to a, a, the hospital, state hospital. And um, that's a big, you know, employer here. Uh, but again, you know, some people can get some vibes with that or whatever. But in the most part, you know, it's off the freeway, right? And yeah. um, you see it there. 
But you know, it's one of those things that you can do your research on it. So just Google the Tapkin Nursing Hospital and you can see what it's about and do your own research. It's usually disclosed to you um, when you're purchasing a property. And you know, it's just, it's a personal thing. So you just have to know about it. Um, you know, we, this is one of the things in our area, but at the end of the day, it, it brings a lot of revenue, a lot of employment to us. So, uh, you know, we love that and we just want to make you aware of it. And hey, maybe you want to work there. Yeah. I, as a lender, I see many applicants from that work there. I think it's, it's one of the higher paying jobs with the benefits and all that for our area. Yeah, for I, sure. I think there was about two, there's about 2000 and local employees that work there. So, yep, there you go. All right, friends. So the only way that we can help you find that sweet spot here in San Luis Obispo or its surrounding areas is you've got to reach out. You've got to give us a call, text, email, day, evening, weekends. It does not matter because we have your back when you're moving to the Central Coast. So until the next video, we'll catch you later.